to Brian's house. Today I'm doing a video of my Singer 99. This is a sewing machine video demonstration. I'm going to try to do a few of these for some of the machines I own as I've been getting some questions from people about their operations and what they like to sew with. So what I'm going to do first is wind the bobbin. The bobbin is a top loading bobbin. It has a little, so you can see you push this little button and the bobbin pops up which is kind of nice. I'm going to take and put my bobbin on the bottom of the bobbin winder here. And my thread. I use industrial cones for thread, so that's why you don't see a spool of thread sitting here on the thread spool. What I do is I'll run it, it comes over and down to the spool, and I just run it through a hole there. To, that way I can keep my thread proper alignment. Go through that thread guide there, through here, just take this off so I can see this. It's a little tricky for me to do this as I'm working with the camera in front of me, between me and the machine. So. It's a standard, you just loosen up the hand wheel and Push the pedal. I'm going to have to cut off this extra thread once things get going. I like to thread wind my bobbin nice and slow, that way my polyester thread doesn't stretch out and cause uneven stitches when I start sewing. Um, this machine does not wind a full bobbin yet. I haven't adjusted the bobbin winder release mechanism. That's a fairly easy adjustment once you uh, get in there and do it. There's a light on the sewing machine that's back here behind it. The motor is an external motor. You can kind of see it right through the back here. Some of the early, the Singer made the, the Singer 99 was made for quite a number of years. This one is a fairly new one. I believe it was made in the mid to late 50s. And take this off. And you can see the bobbin's not not full at all. It's like, you know, I'd say that's three quarters of the way full. So we're gonna take our bobbin and pop it into the top loading bobbin case here, run our thread through. There's a little hole in the bobbin cover. You can have your thread sticking out that until you pull the thread up with the needle. So you see I've got my thread coming from my, if this is my spool of thread, there'll be a spool there, otherwise I've got it coming from the hole in my bobbin over to this first thread guide. Um, just goes through the tension discs around the little spring there, up underneath this guide here, through the thread uptake lever. And then there's a, you probably can't see it, but there's a little thread guide here on the face plate. It goes through there. Oops. There we go. Through this guide here. And the, tighten up my hand wheel again. And this one threads from left to right. We're going to do this from two feet back, and I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to do that. It's quite a challenge. It's almost like threading the needle blind. Ah, there we go. All right. So I simply draw my bobbin thread up, and we're ready to sew. Take that back. I've just got two layers of this. Is, I'd say this is, this is pretty heavy duty denim. Um, this machine will sew through you know, quite a few layers of denim. What the problem that I've found is, and it has a, it, it has a nice long stitch length here. I'll the nice thing about a straight stitch machine is that it's really easy to control. There's not very many feet dogs underneath there. 
And so, turning corners is, you can see how easy this is. You can turn yourself some nice tight loops. The problem with a straight stitch machine and not having many feed dogs is that there's not much pulling the fabric through, which is why it's easy to maneuver. But that's also comes as a problem when you're sewing. If you're trying to use very heavy thread, the the feed dogs are actually what pulls on, you know, but pulls the fabric forward through to the next stitch. To sew with very heavy thread, you have to have your top, you have to have your tension set really high. And what happens is, is that the, as the machine's trying to pull the fabric through, the thread is resisting it based on how much tension there is. And the, so the feed dogs have to do their job to get that fabric pulled through to the next stitch. And if there's not very many feed dogs here, there's not much pulling that fabric through. And so your stitch length will actually end up decreasing if you have a very, you know, you have a lot of tension set. So while well, this machine will definitely sew, here, let's all double this up here. So this is, you know, this isn't, I, I never really think that this is a great test of how well a machine sews, it's just sewing through straight, you know. This is, this is a heavy thread, but it's nowhere near as heavy as, you know, a thread I would use for top stitching on jeans. Um, but you can see there's, you know, it, it has no problem doing this. Um, but like I said, this isn't, this isn't, you know, on any machine, this isn't a great test of how well, you know, how strong the machine is at all. You know. So let's take a look underneath the machine. It's a really heavy, it's a three quarter size machine, but it is really, really heavy. And you can see there's really not much going on underneath here. Straight stitch machine, there's no, no zigzag mechanism. There's nothing, nothing complicated. It is a it is an oscillating hook. Um, the hook is is this part here. It's what it's what pulls the needle thread around the bobbin thread. Um, you know something that people have said about this machine is because it's a side loading. Um, the the needle thread basically has to make a ninety degree right angle turn and come around the bobbin here and then back over. This is another reason why this machine is not particularly suited for super heavy thread. Um, let's see what we've got going on. I'll show you the back of the machine. So the back has the Singer motor. You can tell like, the the cords are just in really nice shape on this machine. Um, they sold this machine. It came in. You could. You, Earlier versions came in wooden wooden boxes with the you know the dome lid. Um, you can actually there's uh, PDF documents on the Singer website and you can find them. I'll try to link to them in this review, where you can basically by using the serial number on the machine you can date almost you can you can't date when the machine was actually manufactured but you can date when the order to have the machine was was placed. So it gives you you know a couple months range. You know, which is that's pretty good. That's pretty good, if you ask me. Um, so that's basically all there is to it. There's really nothing else to. There's not much else to talk about. If you had a, oops, if you had a button holder, you could definitely hook your button holder up to this machine. You would have to use a feed dog cover plate. The, the feed dogs on this machine do not drop. Um, this one does have reverse stitch up here above the line. Is reverse. Earlier versions of this machine did not have reverse. Um, I've also heard that there's this, like this, there's the Singer 99K and what are some of the other, uh, there's some other letters that can come after the 99. And I guess those signify the city in which the, city or country in which the machine was manufactured. So this machine I did, you know, it was in really good shape um, since it, you know, it had a box and a cover and everything and everything was in, in place. But I did, you know, I did, I did clean it up and wax it. Waxing it makes a huge difference in, you know, how an old machine will will appear. Um, but that's, you know, that's about it. There's, it's a very, it's a great little machine. I'm glad to own it. I think it's fun to sew on. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.